This tutorial will be setting up the ESP8266 on the Node MCU. It's on the left hand side set up on this board which has a mini USB to connect to it. However, the cheaper version which is the ESP8266 on its own requires a little bit more love as you can see in front of you. It's a lot smaller and it's a lot more uh, difficult to connect to a breadboard. However, we are going to find a way to connect it but I'll be using a few bits and pieces that you can use regularly on a regular basis to set it up with a guaranteed power su supply. So what we're going to need is an ESP unit. This is the 01 model. Uh, as you can see it's quite small. And a few pins already set up on it but like I said those pins are difficult to plug into the to the breadboard and connect to your cable. So what we're going to use is a Nano over here which I bought from Sunfounder nice and cheap and I'll use that board continuously to connect to the PC and use it as a power supply. Now you can use this for your projects or keep it to connect all your ESP devices. You're going to need some jumper cables and I took some smaller jumper cables. Also you can use an ohm resistor as a jumper cable in this case but I'm not going to use it. So let's get started. We'll set up the ground cable to the ground. That's the first thing we want to do. I use lights, like I said before, I like to keep my cables colored. So ground to ground, red to VCC, which is the 3.3 on this card. After that, I use, like to use my colors. In this case, I'll be using yellow to RX. Then green to TX. Making sure those are connected properly. I'll use the gray cable to set to the reset. And the blue to set to the GP GHPD, which on the board says EN. That's the one you want to connect it to, the GHPD. Then brown to GPIO2 and purple to GPIO0. So now we've got our cable set up here for now we can connect it to the breadboard. There we go. Making sure that's all nice and tight and set up. We'll carefully place the nano onto the breadboard, making sure not to bend the pins, making sure that that's a uh, a mini USB port on the Nano, just so you know, it's not a micro USB. Uh, you may have a different version, but in this case, it's a micro, a uh, mini, sorry. All right, let's get the cable sorted out. So we're going to make sure everything's connected in the right order here. What I'm going to start off with is try to get the, the order so it's easy to remember. I'm going to probably grab a hold of the ground to get started with. Connect that using green, which is the TX, red, which is VCC, brown, which is the GPIO2, and purple, GPIO0, and blue, the CHPD, yellow, RX, and gray, reset. Now, I found that the, the gap between the two cables here was too far apart, so I reset it again. Did you get the general idea? There we go. Those are all set up now. Using the Nano, I find it's very easy because it's uh, like, a, like an easy to configure board as well as it's an easy power supply. Other power supplies like USB to serial can be a bit funky, and I find this to be a more stable and easy to set up. Right, you can use an ohm resistor. In this case, I'm using a 100k ohm resistor, but in, I'm actually going to use a, a red jumper cable to be more visual. It doesn't make any difference. There's no current that will be passing through. I'm going to be using that from the CHPD to the VCC. So we're making sure those two are connected. I'm going to do a little bit of a zoom in here so you get a better close-up. So you can see where those cables are going. And then we are going to connect the GPI zero to ground. Now this connection will 
put the ESP into programming mode. And that's uh, what we really want at the end of the day. So once we've done this, we basically want to get ready to set up uh, the connection to the computer, which is through the Nano. First thing we need to do is uh, get that out the way and connect the reset to ground. This will put the board into sort of a null and void. It'll be like a pass through. And then we need to connect the RX, which is yellow, if you remember earlier, to the RX. So just a close up there so you can see where the RX pin is. Put that in and connect it to the yellow cable. Like I said, I like to keep my cables all colorful and matching. And then the TX, you can have a look there on the board what the cable looks like and then the TX to the TX which is green to green these cables are a little bit of a bugger to get in sometimes and that's that connected so the power supply let's make sure that we have the 3.3 volt connected let's move the ESP cord out the way and grab us a red cable here keeping everything in color fashion and putting that in the 3.3 volt on the nano board and connecting it to the VCC on the ESP which is right through all these little cables here there and finally the ground which will be next there you go you got a nice clear view of what's going on here can't miss that I didn't have any black cables left, so I had to use blue, which goes against my principles. But in this case, when you don't have, you have to make do. So from the ground pin to the ground pin on the ESP. And that's your board pretty much set up to program. Ready to go. We just need to connect the USB and connect it to the computer. Nice little finale on the hardware setup and we can move on to programming. So let's get the Arduino IDE started. If you haven't got it installed earlier, you remember how to install it from previous videos, not difficult, go to their website, close that down. First thing we need to do is go to preferences and make sure our additional board manager has a URL which will be included in the YouTube video clip. So over to tools and board manager. First thing we do is go over to is it contributed which is a drop down there and we're looking for the ESP community install here I've done it already so we'll skip that we'll close it down just to make sure it's installed once it's installed and then we're going to look for a few examples oh yeah first to look for the board go down and then you'll find a new thing called the generic USB click that board Make sure that there's a comm set up for it. It's not necessarily just yet, so we haven't connected. And we'll go to File Preferences and Examples. And we'll go down to ESP Wi Fi. And this is a really good way to check to see if the board's working. Open that uh, example. This is called Scan, Wi Fi Scan. Compile it. We'll just make sure that that compiles through. Not sure if the text is going to be good in low quality videos, but you might want to put it up to the highest value so you can see what's going on here. So once that's compiled, which will be in a few seconds, make sure that you set the serial monitor to the value above, which is 115200. That's important to remember. I had nothing better to do, so I just kept reminding everybody there. And we're compiled now, so what we're going to do is uh, upload this to the board. And let's hopefully everything should go well. What do you think? There it is. It's done the upload. And she's up and running. Those little dots, that's always a good sign. So now this program is basically just going to scan for the Wi Fi in the area. It's only to give you an example of that the fact that the board is programmable. Like I said, there's a lot more you can do with this board. It's cheap, it's easy to use, and it's efficient. Like, for example, setting up on relays, that kind of thing. Right, tools, serial monitor, 
Booyah. Now it's scanning all the Wi-Fi's in the local area. Not only does that, it gives you an example of what the strength is for this card. So, we're up and running. And uh, the internet is available if you've got the programming skills. So use your fantasy and make something cool. But on one last note, make sure that this is what it looks like when you set it up. Plug it in the USB. And it should be blinking like this when it is uploading. If it's not, that's not cool. And things are not set up right. Some versions of the ESP don't come with a red LED, but if the blue is blinking, you're all good. Have a good one. Good luck.